So the reason there's a picture of blueberries here is that um, I, I, lived, uh, I lived in the States for five years and the last two years was in Rhode Island, which is where they grow lots of blueberries. And I'm from Manchester in England. We don't really have blueberries. Um, we're not, there's nothing wrong with us. We just don't have blueberries. We do now because of international uh, shipping and things, but we didn't when I grew up. So I was ridiculously excited by the concept of blueberries. And I, um, I'm, I'd always made lots of jam, like preserves as a kid. And I thought it'd be great when I left Rhode Island to take home bright blue blueberry jam. That'd be really cool. Um, so I went blueberry picking. And you should all know, by the way, that when you go fruit picking in England, if you ever come to England, Britain, uh, you have to suffer for fruit picking in Britain because you either have to bend down and really hurt yourself, you know, hurt your back picking strawberries that are on the floor, or you get scratched to pieces by raspberry canes. You've got it so easy in this country. Blueberry picking is like cheating. This sort of waft along, you know, you pick cloth, waft along a load of bushes and blueberries fall into... <laughs> Anyway, so I collected gallons, because you're in, Amer you're in America, right? It has to be gallons of blueberries. I'm not prejudiced or anything. And, um, the, so I, and then I went, you know, back to make this blueberry jam. And, uh, you know, you put the sugar and the, this stuff in the pan and you start boiling it up. And I waited for this blue jam to emerge. And I'm sure plenty of you have made blueberry jam. And, you know, this is not what happens. What happens is that you let the boiling process happen. You put, what you put in starts blue. What comes out is bright fuchsia pink, which is weird. And it's not blue. I wanted blueberries. Blueberry, blue, blueberry jam. Anyway, so I, I took it home, told everyone it was blackberry jam, and there the matter rested. But I was a bit, you know, like, it's, it's wrong. So six months later, um, when I was back in the UK, I, I had a friend who directed history documentaries, and he was making a documentary about... Uh, wise women in the 16th and 17th centuries and there are quite you know these these are the women who were sort of there were one or two in every village they were the midwives they sort of dealt with people who were ill they sort of picked up the pieces you know doing all these little useful jobs um, and so it's a lot of folk knowledge but they wrote things down they were systematic and he said there are these things that keep coming up and we're, I'm curious to know if there's any actual science I mean they're obviously not touching testing for witchcraft, which is what they thought they were doing. But maybe there's something, you know, maybe there's something going on. So there were a few things that he showed me. One of them was that um, uh, there was a thing that said, if you boil the first water of the morning, which is urine, apparently, and it goes through all the colours of the rainbow, then someone is bewitched. And I think, I think, I think I was bewitched if that... I'd be think I was bewitched if I tried it, but I'd definitely be think I'd be bewitched if it worked. Um, so there were things like that. And, and one of those things uh, was that if you take tincture of verbena, and verbena is one of those bright, colourful flowers that you, we certainly get a lot of them in the summer. You probably get them here, this bit of the, this neck of the woods as well. Um, and you put it on someone's skin that changes colour, then they are bewitched. And uh, I went and had a bit of a think about this. And... It turns out that the, so verbena is, you know, the bright purple and red petals, some of them. And um, they, the pigments that make them, those bright, vivid colours, are a category of chemical called anthocyanins. And um, they're, they're really interesting. They're common in lots of things. If you get red cabbage, for example, that's got lots of anthocyanins in it. So that, not all, but a lot of the bright vegetable pigments are in this class. And the really interesting thing about anthocyanins um, is that they act as pH indicators. If you're ever bored, get some red cabbage, boil it, throw the cabbage away. The water is the interesting bit because it will now be bright red. Uh, and you can go around the kitchen putting it on things, which is highly entertaining. See, because it changes colour. Um, and if you put it on something alkaline, it goes uh, blue. And if you put it on... Uh, no, if you put it alkaline, it goes yellow and green. If you put it on... Uh, acid things, it goes red, that's right, from purple. Um, so change it, so it all, and, it, and it sort of depends on the pan you boil it in as well, you can start with slightly different colours, so there's a huge range of colours. Um, and, and so I, it, I worked out that the, um, your sweat can change pH depending on what you've been doing, right, depending on what you've been eating or what, you know, your genetics. Um, and so after, it didn't, so if I put tincture of verbena, which just means petals boiled in water on my skin. Normally, they didn't change colour, but if I did it just when I'd been come back from a run, because I spent a while trying this, then they'd change colour. So I reckon what those witches, were test witches, wise women, were testing for was, was actually, they had a pH indicator, 
and they were just testing the pH of people's sweat, which was quite interesting. So we did this whole TV segment about that. Uh, and then I remembered the blueberries from six months beforehand, because as any of you who make jam know, when you make blueberry jam, what, what goes in the pan is blueberries and water and sugar and lemon juice. And so the reason that blueberry jam is bright fused pink is that it's basically the entire thing is acting as litmus paper for the lemon juice and telling you that it's acid. So I didn't stand a chance of having blue blueberry jam, but it was almost worth it just for that, that little thing, you know, six months later going, oh, that's why I was doomed to fail. 